here's a fact for you. During every Grand Prix race weekend, each team has two cars out on track. We know that. But also a third driver back at the factory simulating every session. So bloody strong and vicious, it's unbelievable. If you're an F1 fan like me, you probably have one of these. A steering wheel and pedals attached to an F1 game. And you buy it because you think it's realistic. You can race every track with every team and sometimes it even rains. But this simulation is at a very basic level because this is an F1 spec simulator. Simulators in motorsport began life in the aeronautical industry and developed from fast jet trainers about 15 years ago, the technology easily being developed into driver training. With demands on restrictions and testing even tighter now and computers getting ever faster, simulators today are said to be as real life as possible. So much so, I've even bought my race boots. Realism comes from accurately simulating all the senses you would feel from driving a race car. Visually, seeing braking points and cues and apexes and stuff like that. Then we have audibly hearing the gear changes, hearing the braking lock up and hearing your engineer talking in your ear as well. And then physically comes in two different forms. Here on XCAR we talk a lot about driving from the seat of your pants and the feel you get from the cars that we drive. A lot of the sensations and the things we like about cars are what we feel. Firstly, the force feedback through the steering wheel. No power steering on this particular machine and therefore the steering is constantly trying to rip out of my hands. The brakes, incredibly hard like you'd expect in a Formula One car, no servo on those. And also the clunk every time I change upper gear, the whole chassis moving around as you'd expect from any gearbox in a high powered race car. As I turn through this right hander, in a race car my body would be squashed to the left hand side of the car, but without actual G, this simulator exerts pressure onto my left side of the body, confusing my brain into thinking I've got G-force. There are nine pads all over the car simultaneously working, and because they are pneumatically controlled, they can sustain the force therefore accurately replicating G-Force. This is a proper workout. More similar to aeronautical simulators, the whole rig is suspended by hydraulic rams. These add to the pitch and roll sensation through the suspension and attacking curbs from a real car. All of this does a fantastic job of making me feel like I'm actually in a Formula One car. There is no doubt this is the most realistic simulator I've ever driven but how can it be used to develop drivers, improving technique and also improving the car? Dan Jackson is my make-believe race engineer for the afternoon. He'll be monitoring the car's telemetry as I complete one full lap of the circuit. Let's see how I measure up. It's the old 2007 circuit in Bahrain, which has got a very Mickey Mouse section in the middle of it. And hopefully I can get around without crashing. I break way too early there. It's a slow, slow apex. You can feel the rear of the car sliding around. I clearly haven't got the same temperature of the tires that I wanted. Let's see if I can get this right. 
bang, down, down, down. Yeah, and I can suddenly feel the car working now. Got the tyres and brakes up the temperature on the very last corner, and that's a lap. Dan, you've been looking at the telemetry. What have I been doing wrong? Uh, there's a couple of things, really. The first thing is you're not pushing the brake pedal to full 100% force. I told you I couldn't do 100 <laughs> kilos. Um, the second thing, really, is you're not, you're not confident enough under the braking, so you need to be able to push the brakes once um, as the car slows down, bleed off the brakes, whereas what you're doing at the moment is you're pushing the brakes, coming off the brakes, going back on the brakes, um, to sort of, you're not really getting that smooth in entry to the corner. You need one application of the brakes, and bleed off as you slow down, and then one smooth application of the throttle as you exit the corner. I think that's the brutality of this, shaking me up and not being able to really think about being smooth with all the inputs. I'll try and put that into the test with this next run and see if we can beat my time. Wow! <laughs> fighter! I've got to that level now where I'm starting to really feel the setup of the car and actually trying to attack the rear seems to be very loose, Dan. How can we make the car feel better? Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to add a clicker rear wing and we'll soften up the anti-roll bar at the rear end as well. Okay, and that should then stabilise the rear end and in theory, even though on this simulator, I should have to feel that when I'm driving around the circuit. <laughs> As I accelerate out of the corner, I'm going to feel the car trying to rotate on me. I've got that much better than I did last time. Just one simple change completely transformed the way the car handled. And F1 teams and those third drivers back at the factories can use that to recommend changes to the race drivers at the circuit, finding that sweet spot much, much faster and therefore hopefully having a more successful weekend. Technology has come on so far that the real and simulated worlds are now truly being amalgamated. And it got me thinking. The champions of yesteryear came from karting, honed their craft, pounding around the world in expensive go-karts. I wonder whether the champions of tomorrow will come from the simulated world, from the casual gaming community. Ask Red Bull Junior Jan Mardenbra, who three years ago was playing Gran Turismo on his bed, and he'll tell you the future is now.